What the hell? All right. Well, my fucking stream deck is broken. There we go. All right. Let's do this. Time for more Satisfactory. Oh, how I missed you, Factory, with no rules, limits, or logic. What? Satisfactory is a game about making efficient machines. Or in my case, just find new and inventive ways to torture the game. First, we built how a factory that was actually kind of normal. This? Until I realized you could make it look like this. And then I made it look like this. And I realized the frame rate gets worse, which excites me. And then we tested those limits by building a tornado out of conveyor belts. And it's actually kind of pretty. Hell? Just don't look directly at fuck? it, unless you like slideshows. Then I saw this empty valley, and I thought, you know what this kid used? A conveyor belt weave. Not to be outbeaten, we went back over to Belt NATO here and turned it into a full fledged cocoon. After that, we moved on to other interests, like messing with these trucks here, only to realize that if you throw them all in a pit like this, they become sentient and try to escape. And I thought we might be done. And then those crazy developers just kept oh updating the game, so I kept trying out their new stuff. His poor PC. His poor PC. I feel bad for his PC. Ah, oh, good night. All right, good night, Lordro. Thank you so much for stopping by. It was good to see you. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. Like this beautiful train station that you can even custom name. And boy, did I custom name it. That's when I realized we could send them through the earth and straight to hell. And then at the tail end of the last episode, we realized one last thing left to do. Nuclear power. Oh, and also, today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Bye -bye. But I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. <laughs> oh, and before we head to our first destination, check this out. The game actually runs better now, and this blows my mind. My god, the performance increase is amazing. This thing doesn't destroy my computer anymore. Like, I can run up to it? I can bask in its majesty? It is a brave new world. Oh so what God. are we gonna do today? Play around with nuclear power, of course. We built this guy at the end of last episode, and our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and shove it into this thing. Last episode, we used our little locator guide here to find uranium, which was a little ways away. But the bigger hurdle is this stuff will kill you if you get too close to it. And that's why we brought this lovely thing. A hazmat suit. Strap it on, makes you look super cool. Now we're ready to go face the elements. You know what? Let's do it with style in our beautiful beautiful sexy car. Now I feel like I took a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm gonna have faith that this is the right way. Well, everything's green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. I think we're going to the right place. Yep, we definitely are. I wow. see little bits of ore here. Oh, hello cat friends. These are supposed to be spiders in the game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, the, which I think we can creepy. all agree is a little worse than just spiders. Anyway, we'll just take care of them in short order, no that's, big that's, deal. Oh, you want some creepier. too, do you? Let's get the this nightmare over with. Okay, where was I? Putting down our beautiful mining drill, that's what. Never has anything in a cave looked so majestic. So right now, this thing doesn't have any power, which honestly is for the better, because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find this, I had to go through a waterfall? It's true. I wandered around for like an hour before I figured out it's back here. Okay, finally ran the conveyor belt all the way home. We're going to stage our uranium over here. You may recognize this little place over here. In a in previous I'm, video, this is where I had all of my trucks. You know, the ones that turned into a sentient species. And then I had terrifying. to put them down, otherwise the game would never run again. So we're going to stage everything here because we can't just terrifying. send the uranium over raw. Holy we got to make shit. two things first. Uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods. Uranium cells are the uranium itself as well as concrete. And the electromagnetic rods are staters and AI limiters. Easy enough. Let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here and also just kind of over there. We're also going to send our uranium into this guy over here. Which, by the way, we haven't connected the power to that thing yet, so let's do that now. Okay, here we go. So now that we've connected the power, all we have to do is wait for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. While we wait, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, and that would be NordVPN. I don't get a chance to talk about this very much in my videos, but I actually take online privacy extremely seriously. And as part of my arsenal of things I do to stay safe online, I've always used a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Think of it as like a hazmat suit for your data. And in this case, <laughs> that hazmat suit allows you to stay anonymous online, encrypts your data, and keeps your location private. NordVPN also has, at the time of this video, over 5,000 servers located across 59 countries, and they're adding more servers all the time. They also have Android and iOS apps, so you can use it on your mobile devices as well. So if you want to join me in protecting yourselves online, head on over to nordvpn.com slash game it out, or use the link in the description, and you can get 70% off a three-year plan. And if you use 
game it out at checkout. Not only does it help them know I sent you there, you'll also get an additional month free. So again, hey. that's nordvpn.com slash game it out. And don't forget to use game it out at checkout to get that extra free month. NordVPN, thanks again for sponsoring me. And there it is. For the record, it took about four minutes and it still oh. hurts to get in here, right? Oh boy, does it ever. It's kind <laughs> of a shame. It's so pretty to look at. It's like a bunch of Slimers just on a conveyor belt. Slimers so this guy over here is going to be for our uranium cells. The uranium we obviously have. And right in front of us at the center of our base is some concrete. Okay, and there's the concrete. As I slowly died radiation poisoning. Now this Ugh. thing's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, gotta grab them stators and AI limiters. Alright, AI limiters for days. And these are the stators. Thankfully, I have pretty much all of these materials being built somewhere in my base. And I just need to find them and route them over here. Now that those two things are underway, we have to turn to our old friend, the manufacturer, which we're going to build down here for kind of no reason. And in this thing, we're going to build nuclear fuel rods, which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this, very radioactive. <laughs> that's what I like very to hear. Radioactive. First, we'll send okay. these uranium cells down Thanks, there. Game. Okay, that's one down and two down. So that connects our two nuclear things. To finish off the trifecta, we just need to get ourselves some of these encased industrial beams, which I just happen to know where there's a lot of them. It's like all the stuff I built previously was all building up to this. Also known as, thank God my production is so imbalanced, I just have extra random crap everywhere. See if we can't work quickly here, I seem to be taking on a not insignificant amount of radiation poisoning. Uh, and there fine. we go. And we'll just send these beauties right over there. And since I've already got my medical inhaler out, this calls for a celebration puff. Uh, now that I've taken on 10 generations worth of radiation <laughs> sickness, I'm just gonna stare off into space for a bit and let my empire just grow. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape now. Oh, so many okay. beautiful fuel rods. Now comes wow. the fun part, That's... where I route fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm gonna melt my face off. Almost there. Ah, finally, after all that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. The machine looks to be working, and boy is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. I thought that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My god, look at that jump. Our capacity for power was 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. Wow. That is quite the leap. So here's the other thing that happens with nuclear power. We get delicious, beautiful waste. Oh. Extremely radioactive. Oh, no. And what are we gonna do with that nuclear waste? Well, build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags it through this waterfall, of course. And I'm using the slow conveyor belts, because I want all that radiation goodness to get all in the mm, water supply. Sweet, and then sweet, once the slow journey is complete. All that tasty waste goes into this bin for future generations to worry about. Okay, first nuclear power plant done. And while I'm satisfied Wait. we could get that first one off the ground, Wait I feel first. like there's so much more we could be doing. Huh, this gives me an idea. I can't help but think being able to look at the cocoon again is a blessing like in disguise. So for the first time in a long one. time, we're going back in. It's been so long since I was able to climb in this thing. Here we are in the belly of the beast. These, of course, being our three oil refineries. I'm tempted to go back and change all of these Mark 1 conveyor belts to Mark 5, but even I hurt imagining how long that would take. We're now here at the halfway point. You can tell because the iron rods stop and the oil begins, so I don't actually think there's an opening. I think I have to make one to get out. Nope, wait, found my opening. I'll just yes. fly my way up there. Hopefully I don't run out of fuel for my jetpack. It's a long way down. Ah, and here we are at the very top. I know I've said it a couple of times, but I cannot stress how bizarre it is to be able to look at this thing and this the frame rate maintains. Look at the dumpster that is my factory. <laughs> Oh God. Like, what at this point, this? even I can't tell what goes where. So I keep forgetting that there's, like, stairs and walkways. And it would be really useful because we do need to find a way to get up there fast. But no one likes taking know, stairs. So it's I found like a better way to get up art. there. It's called a bunch of bounce pads all over the place. Here, let me show you what I mean. It starts with this bounce pad right over here. So we just jump on this conveyor belt, which will launch us in at the right angle. It'll take us over to this bad boy, and it'll just start bouncing us all the way up to the top. And the nice thing is it's all set up so I don't have to do anything. And I can just bask and look at our factories really just enjoy the ride oh sh <laughs> not even moving anything it's just bouncing me for me so i can just look around at the nice surroundings really take in all the beautiful scenery are you f***ing serious? She or tried. I can just hold on for dear life and hope the whole thing works. Honestly, it works about 10% of the time. <laughs> it's the best. But it gets you close to the top of the cocoon, so beggars can't be choosers. Oh, here we are coming in for a landing. Bounce off this backboard. Here comes the final bounce. I can't think of a better way to get to the top of this spiral. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, what's the plan? I mean, if you look out there, you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping yeah. nuclear waste down below. So here's what we're going to do. I know this seems like sacrilege, but we're going to cut the head off 
off of the beast. And what? I know it seems scary, but I promise you there's a reason for everything. Remember how the top of this thing, because of the red tint, looked kind of like a orange. warhead? Well, it, now it we're really, really putting that nuclear touch on the top of it. Yeah, okay, oh. that's looking better. Got that kind of gaudy Vegas quality to it. Also, why is my nuclear reactor already showing signs of wear and tear? I haven't even... Chat, chat, chat. I've got a bad feeling about this. And I like it. Hooked it up yet. And of course, we want it to look classy, right? Like, look at all the crap already floating around this thing. That majestic crown up there deserves the finest curb appeal. So first, let's make sure to loop this stuff the through everything of, yes, so that everything is nicely irradiated. Okay, radiation. yeah, this'll do. B plus at best. So we're going to take these fuel rods and we're going to feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way, oh the God. entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. Now all we need to do is connect it to the power grid. Thank Thankfully, because of the bounce pads floating in the air over here, there's already a bunch of power lines just ready for me to connect to. God, look at that burst in power right there. Now we gotta deal with my favorite thing, nuclear waste. The waste is all gonna come out of right here, and as is my custom, we're only gonna use the finest, slowest belts we can. Oh, now all we need to do is just run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels. And just to make it a tad more convenient, I'm gonna send the nuclear waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology. Technology. Thank God these things can just keep going lower and lower and lower. Look at that. You can just have it hand-delivered right to the ground. You know what I think I'm going to do with all this nuclear stuff? I'm just going to add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out. And I'm just going to mix these in with the iron rods. Oh, yeah. I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. Yeah, <laughs> well, sure. There it goes. Join your friends. You know, though, with two power plants, I still feel like we're not yeah, producing sure, sure enough nuclear not a waste. Right, Chad? Ah, much better. There's like 50... Oh, whoa, oh. Empty power plants back this there. This poor man's a piece. Ah, much better. There's like 50 power plants back there. But this actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best. And in order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up. Otherwise, they're just going to sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient factory. It's not so great if you want your main export to be nuclear waste. And God, do we want more of these barrels. And to do that, we're going to turn to our old friend, train technology. And the reason for that is because trains generate electricity and I can set them to go forever. So test one. One station here and another station here. Let's put a train down and do a quick test. As you can see, firing this thing up, it goes around and around and around, generating not nearly as much as I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains together. And while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to function like this, they all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole oh. lot. And I'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to see if we can generate some power faster. It Test is... number two. In which case we see if adding some rails is... that go up increases how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance mostly because I don't know how to use train tracks very well. Let's play conductor and see how it goes. I'm so as scared. always, when you first start it out, it does take a lot of power. Downhill does a little bit less for the power. Once the train gets moving, it takes up less because it's already got that speed going. So here's my current running theory. Maximum trains combined with maximum Maximum train stations means tons of stopping and starting, meaning tons of power generated. You know, I have an idea how we can test this, but I gotta build something real fast. So hang on, it'll just take a second. <laughs> okay, here's test number whatever this is. I sure hope it goes okay. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these God. tracks. It's not particularly pretty or elegant. Jeez. Hey, the whole point is just to generate electricity. Okay, now we've added the trains. In case you're curious, this is 188 trains, all connected together, taking up the entire track start to finish. And it's all automated, so the trains will just loop through this disaster forever. There are 23 total stations they go through, aptly named Pulp, before looping back around. <laughs> You know what pains me most about this? It's not that it's actually semi-orderly, although that also pains me. It's how freaking slow everything's going. I didn't realize that would be the thing that drives me nuts. But enough talk. How's it doing for our power? At an idle state, about 6,000, not too bad. When right. the trains start 6, up again, 000. it hits a nice, healthy 12,000. Oh, wow. That's still a far Doubles. cry from maxing out our potential with 100,000. But before I go nuts and start laying out more track, let's at least see if we're exporting any of the good stuff now. And by that, of course, I mean nuclear waste. Yeah. 
Yeah, this will do. This will oh. do nicely. That's a lot of barrels. I think this is working out quite Chad, well. So normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this I stuff would. so it doesn't do any harm. But why would you want to hide something so majestic? Now me, I look at my base and I see something that's barrels. missing. And I think this has a chance to be a real showpiece. Once again, I'll be back in a hot minute. Well, that's looking just swell. Oh yeah, feels good. This is looking great. So one might look at this and get the impression that I covered the entirety of my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely <laughs> including the weave, which if I do say so myself has never looked better. It's kind of like this is a waste disposal site, except above ground and advertising its presence. Oh my god, the radiation is so bad. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. I've made the base so hostile I can't even be here anymore. <laughs> and also the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste looks so vibrant in the moonlight. So I feel like this is how this base was going to end up. Nuclear waste everywhere, power plants as far as the eyes can see, our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a warhead aiming up to the heavens. And thank god I can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all while I fly off. Oh, and thank my lucky stars, the frame rate's gotten kind of bad again. I'd like to thank NordVPN again for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, if you head on over to NordVPN.com slash oh That was so much bad. That was so many barrels of... That was so many barrels, chat. Chat, that was so many fucking barrels. That was so many barrels of top. Oh my god. How? Oh my god. This guy must have one hell of a PC. Jesus Game it out. Christ. You can get 70% off. He must also have one hell of a PC. Oh, what else do I